every day I wake up is another blessing Thankful every second getting God's protection I lost connection in the desert, I had no reception But in that time alone I probably learned a thousand lessons I used my time for introspection and some self-reflection And analyzed a couple ways to conquer my depression Everything doesn't happen the way we plan it to But if we harvest energy then we can plan it too So take a look in my eyes, that's where the story all right, last video of the day is on Diablo 4 Seasons. I've never played a season of Diablo. I've only played a bit the game, the story, like of Diablo 3. And I have Diablo 2 as well, but I haven't played it. I got it like in a bundle or something. Uh, but so I've been hearing a bunch of stuff about seasons that I never knew about. You have to make new characters and stuff. I'm not tripping about it because I get to play all different class types and stuff that way. But let's hear from a DM here about uh, how Diablo seasons work, what we should know, and all that good stuff. Seeing as how I'm a new to it. And we might try out Oh, that's how that happens. I don't know if he's like fast forward through stuff just holding the thing. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, let's see what he, uh, let's find out this information since I'm a noob. And, uh, we might try out, uh, a, a hardcore stream one day soon, maybe. All right, let's check out what DM got to say. Let's explain how Diablo 4 seasons are going to work. The reason that we're going to do this is because there are a good amount of people that are new to Diablo that might not understand seasons. So a lot of this will be basic information, but if you're new to the game, ARPGs or the genre in general, by the end of this, you should understand what to expect. And Keep apparently in mind this is how seasons work for all ARPGs. I might try Path of Exile. I don't know. I hear that. That's a pretty good one. We break down some of this, that seasons are not 100% fully explained by the devs yet, but I will break down everything that we do know so far. The very first thing you should understand is when you're going to have a new season, you will need to create a new character. That is because the characters are tied to a realm. For instance, right now it is called the Eternal Realm. It's Eternal Realm because it's the permanent, normal, main server. For this reason, when you start a new season, you will create a new character. It will go on to the season realm. We will have a season one realm, season two realm, etc. The season realm, at the end of the season, whatever character you had, let's say this was my seasonal character, at the end of that season, your character will be transferred to the eternal realm, meaning that character will be available to be played on the main server. Oh, so you so don't even lose the character. I heard that. Actually, I think I heard that. Yeah, but that's a see right there. That's a good thing already. You don't lose the character. You gotta level your character up again, but at least you don't lose it. So the it. common question I hear is, do I need to start the new character for the new season? Will my old character carry over? No, it will not carry over. You will need a new character for the new season. The reason for this is there's very often seasonal mechanics that will like accelerate growth, make you stronger, change the way aspects work, etc. So it would make sense. Everyone needs a new character in order to experience this fairly that also means if you start season one later in the game or you just purchase the game during season one you're not really behind except there is one thing that carries over in the game the first thing that carries over will be your map if you look at the map and you see all of the portions that are uncovered visually mm -hmm. that will carry over to your new seasonal character see, meaning you good. don't have to rediscover the map however this is not true necessarily for waypoints if mm. i make a brand new character in the game Let's just name it Temp, as this is just for the sakes of this video here. You'll notice I'll instantly have some waypoints. You will have these same major city waypoints in the seasons. However, the rest of the map will be uncovered, but you will need to go acquire the waypoints again. So uh, you will need to walk around and well, pick I have up the ones, mount, but you though. will still have these main waypoints. Okay, so the only difference between like a season and a new character in terms of the map is actually that the map is uncovered. So it's a little bit of a buff for your seasonal characters. However, the renown on the new characters doesn't 100% carry over. For instance, you can see I have the check marks of all of the renown on a new character because I've yeah, done the renown already the on this two. realm. The realm from your eternal realm that you've already accomplished will only count for the map discovered as well as your altar of Lilith's acquired. 
So you will effectively get like the first two unlocked just about. The rest of the renown will still need to be done because uh -huh. your side quests will need to be completed as a new character. Your strongholds are still going to be need to be done. And then like I mentioned, a lot of those waypoints will still need to be collected. However, the stats from the Altar of Lilith, this is a brand new character and you can see I've already got a lot of stats. All of the stats from the Altar of Lilith will carry over from the Eternal Realm, meaning oh. you can farm the Altar of Lilith now, That's good. and that is something that will save you time I think I'm when Seasons come out. Lilith. Now, you might actually be wondering, why today. would I participate in Seasons at all? If there's a realm that's permanent that stays, why would I even want to make a new character and participate in Seasons? Well, this is a good question, so let's try to explain it. Typically, Seasons in the ARPG type of genre, and specifically the Diablo, um, have something exciting that are going to happen in the new seasons. Very typically, there's some seasonal mechanic. For instance, if you remember the Diablo 3 last season, there was this like altar-like thing you can sacrifice as all these different bonuses. There's something that very much changes the core gameplay and mechanics of the game. But in Diablo, okay. they have also stated there's going to be seasonal quests that come to these games. And the seasonal quests are more of like big overarching story, story type of points. So it should be closer to a DLC or expansion than any of so wait, is since you have to do all the side quests over again, are those new quests main quests or are they side quests? I, I didn't, did he say They're that? The previous games that we've had within this genre. There's also objectives within the season. This is a screenshot from one of the dev live streams where they tried to explain this. You can see there are objectives of which you would like to attempt to accomplish during the season in order to get rewards. Now, if you have played any of the previous Diablos, you'll remember there was like Herodric's Blessing, where very often you would get like a set or something that's associated with one of the bonuses in it. And if you actually look at this, you're gonna see one of the rewards is actually a legendary aspect. So I would assume it's something similar here where there's actually going to be bonuses to certain aspects, things that really change the core fundamentals of combat. There is also seasonal blessings. Oh, this is not pay the win, but it is something that has been construed as potentially being so that. You seasons. cannot farm these any faster with the battle pass. And we'll talk about the battle pass in just a second, but just to is. get that, that out of the way. This is something yet. that you will basically accomplish by completing your challenges and going through the battle pass levels, et cetera. The free portion, oh, again, there's a free level. and premium, premium only being cosmetic, but the smoldering ashes, that you get through doing the season, you can use to effectively get boost for that seasonal character. For oh, instance, boost to XP, okay, boost to gold, uh, boost to rare materials, season. boost to uh, the duration of elixirs. Effectively, this is another enhanced accelerated type of aspects. growth mechanic. So that way, let's say you play the eternal realm and you only try two of the classes. When you try your third class, you're actually gonna get some sort of enhanced type of mechanic. So that way you can maybe make the character level a little bit faster, maybe have a little bit more of an opportunity to try something you otherwise couldn't have tried at that level. Here's a screenshot of the battle pass and the way the battle pass is actually gonna work is the locked ones are through purchases only, which are going to be cosmetics and premium currency oh, only. got a messaging kick, what does it say? Hi man, we doing support stream from our Discord. Also, we have some streamers that are, that are doing promote streams like Axel Long Kick. I follow you, by the way. You're the right streamer to be promoted. Oh, thanks. My first stream on here. Doing a stream, support stream on our Discord. Oh, that's cool. Well, I appreciate you. Four cosmetics, whereas the free track you get from leveling your character, and you will unlock some free cosmetics as well as you can see here it says ashes, and that right there would be the smothering ashes, okay, which are for the mechanic that I just explained. So the battle pass will be another seasonal mechanic, um, even though it's you know, battle passes very often get associated with, you know, pay the win or over the top monetization. It's really just a simple, another simple seasonal leveling mechanic of a way to acquire certain types of resources and yes, cosmetics while you're doing it. Doing the actual season's objectives will get you the favor, which will enhance your battle pass, further accelerating the growth of your character. 
Mm -hmm. And if you've seen my previous videos about the data mine, there is potential for there to be new world tiers released with the new seasons. I do believe they will probably use the new seasons, which Wait, will be quarterly, by the way. So there's going to be a new season effectively every three months, which is for a year. And during that time, we're probably going to see that's when they start putting the major additions into the game. For instance, World Tier 5, the new gyms, all of that stuff that's day of the mind. I would assume we would see that with the addition of the new seasons. And if you watch the Diablo 4 campfire chat that they talked about, they actually did break down some of this right, information yeah, as well. And they explained to us that a lot of the major changes, for instance, nightmare dungeon experience buffs, the sigils teleporting you directly to it, some quality of life changes, etc. A lot of that they're trying to get done by season one. So I'm assuming these patches are going to be fairly beefy across the board. And then by the end of it, your character that you created mm -hmm. goes on to the home major realm, and then you are still able to experience and enjoy whatever I'm character you have managed character. to build. Right. That is my understanding cool. of it currently. I could have a few of the... Oop, Kitty's losing her mind. I could have a few of the minor details, maybe a little off, but I've done my best to understand it from the way they've explained it. And I'm sure when we get closer to the first season, which will launch here in mid to late July is the line they keep going with. So sometime probably from the 15th of July towards the end of July, then we will probably get a, four, get a full vacation. nuance breakdown of patch notes, etc. A few uh, of the common points I've seen for seasons is people are worried about, oh, my character that I made is going to, you know, get deleted or whatever. Your character will stay on the same server, that all of the characters for all the new seasons ones will eventually be on as well. You're not losing anything by participating now. As a matter of fact, if you create a character and do the renown grind now, that will factually help you going into season one and make you stronger and because your altar of Lilith. Lilith will give you that bonus, including the stat bonuses that you get from the altars of Lilith as well. So do your altars of Lilith and you also have accelerated growth on new character because of I the seasonal mechanics. So creating a new character is going to be the best time at seasons. Now, because Kitty is losing her mind, I need to go feed my cat. Consider liking, subscribing if this helped at all or visiting the live stream, which you can find in the pinned comment section. Love you all. Have a wonderful word. Like, you know, whatever, all he said, everything he said, do that. But, uh, I don't know how, I don't know how I feel about the renowned stuff, though. The waypoint stuff is whatever. Because you can just run around, dude, you gotta run around anyway. Hmm. I don't like the renowned thing. I think at least the first three tracks of renowned should be open. So you could have the potions and the uh the skill points. But everything else seemed cool. I don't know why everyone's freaking out. It's just how the game works, man. I'm hiding out, wilding out, cooling down, collecting thoughts till I find my route. And if they catch me, they'll be finding out what I'm about. Until then, I'm riding out. I'm hiding out, wilding out, cooling down, collecting thoughts till I find my route. And if they catch me, they'll be finding out what I'm about. Until then, I'm riding out, riding out. Check it out. I'm a desperado. I'm living it in real life. What's next to follow? I hit the bottle.